so maybe an end to them. Before we... Or Russia, uh, this mm. Russian Republic, as it is now. Have you had any further contacts? The 33rd International Congress on Military Medicine in Helsinki, uh, the year 2000. And here you can see how they can beam an individual just straight, just to one person with microwaves, and the others are totally unaffected. From vans, from uh, all these um, military equipments, also from helicopters and, and planes. And always neighbors. So that's very interesting because neighbors. that, that uh, relates very, very uh, closely to the kind of material that a guy in England called Barry King is. Right, nothing like changing batteries. Right, okay, take two. This um, document. This one? Yeah. Well, it was presented in. Uh, this is at what conference? At the conference, 33rd International Conference on Military Medicine. And where was that? Uh, held? It was held in Helsinki, the year 2000. And this was part of, of my poster presentation. Excellent. And um, there you can see how vans can send microwaves just to one person from the neighboring house. Helicopters can do it, and all kinds of military equipment. And this was, of course, from taken from uh, the US. And how did your research uh, enable you to find out about that? This one. This was sent to me a long time ago by an, uh, an Englishman who was doing research. Excellent. And uh, I used that. Okay. And, um, and interestingly, this oh, this is my article in uh, in uh, internet, which I have not myself put into internet, but it's a. Uh, I counted thirteen languages now, even right. you know, Japanese, Russians, whatever. Is this based on lectures you've given elsewhere? Yeah, it's sort of. Uh, it was the first. Uh, first uh, publication in a medical journal ever in the world in Spekula, Oulu University in Northern Finland uh, medical club for the students and the medical doctors of North Finland and this article was printed in their magazine and uh, it was interesting that already in 1874 in Ohio they put the first implants Electrodes, they when? call them then. 1874. Oh. Somebody has been tampering with the text and put 1974, but it was 1874. Uh, it was a female patient who died. But still, so already then they were doing research in the Good Sam Samaritarian Hospital in Ohio. That's pretty startling. Yeah. It's been going on for a long time. All it finished also. This was the first article ever in a, in a medical journal about, um, about near-death experiences and, and um, out-of-body experiences in 83. But it's in Finnish. So, uh, and these probably are, you know, you probably know them because they're from Matrix and they are from American publications. They did that on the on the green and common women. They used mind control on them. That's right. That's right. That's right. Do you have it? Do you have you any information on that? Green yes, common? I have. I have read the story. Yeah. Kim Kim Be something. What was her? Uh, she's dead now. Yeah. Many of those ladies died of cancer, and that's what they do. That's the um, green and common ladies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Died of cancer. Yeah. Because of the mind control, and the microwaves. Of course, but they can cause cancer. The, the, the worst thing is that they use illnesses as weapons today. They can, they can beam into you cancer. For rats it takes only two days. But they have another frequency and they can also take it away. But do you think they give it to humans? No. And do you think that's what the reason is they need a DNA code for Probably, everybody? probably. Then they can also um, cause a myocardial infarction if they want to kill you. If they don't, they just give you angina, you know, it just hurts, heart pain. Or they can, they can give you a stroke, they can give you a diarrhea, they can make you vomit in a second. And this is used as a weapon. Think. A friend of mine in Dorset 
experienced that. She was uh, there was a helicopter flew over her house. Yeah. She was just walking in the country, and she had something which happened to her, just which made her. That's right. V- 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 I remember seeing a TV on TV when George Bush Senior was in Japan on a on an official visit, and all of a sudden at the dinner he started vomiting. And, and the Japanese, you know, they went like this, and the film was not shown in the USA. But I just had one question, was it CIA or was it Japanese? And at uh, President Obama's inauguration dinner, two senators. Yeah, that's, that's um, incredible. And also when, when, Sen- uh, when President Obama was giving his oath, something happened, you know, it didn't work the way it should have been. I just thought, who clicked? Because he was smiling when he did it. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, and f- yes. Oh, this is uh, part of which. Oh, we didn't talk about that. So let's let's just uh, get a little bit on on your new book. Well, it, it no. talks about. Uh, I did start with it. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you took yeah, it, uh, okay. the whole thing, yeah, yeah. so I don't have to repeat it. But there was an interesting thing. They were in the year two thousand and three, two and three. Um, in Norway, they were uh, having a, a, an official governmental committee looking into maybe, how would I say it, bad things that have been done in medicine to people. And of course, they come to the conclusion that uh, nothing has been done uh, before 1975. But they didn't accept, the committee secretary did not accept the positive findings. And even if an 81-year-old um, Dr. Melby, who had been in that, the, at the National Board here in Norway, had come out before his death and said that they had been using human uh, patients as, as guinea pigs. He didn't use the word guinea pigs, but, you know, using them for what they say research. They didn't take that in. I said, well, he was so old. So that's, again, the official truth, is that nothing has happened, which is bad for patients. But unofficially, a lot of things have happened. And right now, about a month ago, in the major newspaper, Aftenposten, was two pages of a 91-year-old medical doctor who said, yes, we have done, we have given malaria to people. We have done this and this and this. Because we didn't know what to do with the patients in the mental institutes. And in this uh, committee that gave out the report in uh, the year 2003, I was there for one hour and and gave positive information. Like, you know, the Times magazine had an article that that, um, Norway, uh, among others, uses insane for for research. Uh, Nothing came out. But these two last pages show something. And I thought that was very interesting. This is the official name of the, of the committee. And this is done, as you see, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army, whatever. U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. United States Navy, Office of Naval Research, U.S. Navy, U.S. Navy, NASA. Doing research with patients in Norway. Man. In Norway? This is all This in is Norway. Norway. This was Dr. Sem Jakobsen, who was working with American military institutes. And this, is, this was from 1950s um, so to 1960s. Why is there such a heavy involvement of U.S. I mentioned government. it. And Norway. And that is why, do you think that Norway might be used as Exactly. A... Exactly, because it's been used like this previously. And in Scandinavia, people normally don't complain very seldom. They don't don't complain if doctors do something bad. But in the USA, you know, you maybe uh, have to pay a million dollars or something. Well, so this Scandinavian countries are good for experimentation with US funding, as this is now absolutely shown. Even if this is old, 50s, 60s, but it shows that something has been dying, doing, that they've done something. And officially, there's nothing. But these were the two large, pa- large pages of, of, of the report. But the report concluded that nothing has happened. Nothing's happened, but yeah. done it anyway. Well, it's the same thing as with Condon reports. You know, the, the report about the UFOs at the Colorado University. Yeah. So, uh, summary. They are um, the soldiers that were used at the nuclear weapons tests. That's right. Things come out. 
are actually everything comes out and maybe that's the thing that why somebody wants these things to come out too because they do come out because ultimately it's going to affect their children that's right uh, they've had a court cases here because there there's a special boat with big radars here military radars in Norway yeah and all of a sudden the, the crew started having uh, children who were abnormal and there were so many of them that it wasn't just a coincidence but so far I have read from papers they haven't been reimbursed in any way but of course the child's life is destroyed and of course it has affected the sperm of the males. Are you familiar with Tetra? I've read about it yeah. in the internet. Yeah. But, um, the military. Which military? This this was the, the conference that you just filmed, you yes. know, the okay. International Conference on Military Medicine. That was my abstract. Which so that's, stated, a hell, that's a hell of a thing for you to get involved with. That's right. And this was a neurology conference, the same MK, and this was a world conference on, on uh, general practitioners, the same. And uh, the conclusion was like uh, here that um, silent sound technology successfully also used in the first Iraqi war showed that microwaves can cause hallucinations and hearing voices in healthy soldiers. European Parliament resolution from 1999 uh, suggests a global ban on technology affecting human behavior. So there's a ban. They're suggesting a ban. So you've been under a little bit more attack uh, than just strange keys in your carpet thing. Oh, yeah. how, how do you feel? Let's get a little bit. Yeah, like I said, I've been hit unconscious and taken to the hospital with an ambulance. I've been poisoned. <laughs> what kind of poisoning? That's all very serious. It is. They put it into the into the fireplace or they put it through the uh, air ducts and you become sick, unconscious and throw up and my mother was here and it was it was pretty bad I have to say I don't want to go into details but she's dead. And also you've been attacked in the in the in the internet. You... Oh yeah oh yeah absolutely you know whatever it's uh, it's it's a campaign it's uh, I call it uh, CIA's uh, campaign for um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, when uh, for discrediting, I mean it's clear, and it's very interesting that the leader of uh, UFO Nova is behind it behind lies a lot. The leader of, of uh, UFO uh, Sweden too, not that badly because he's a journalist. He's more cautious, but you know, like the leader of, of UFO. Norway says that I have bought one of my three medical titles from the New York Academy of Sciences for $80. Come on, I was asked to be a member for your achievements. And there are 40 Nobel uh, Prize winners and uh, Charles Darwin and, and, um, and uh, President uh, Thomas Jefferson as previous members. And their annual fee was $80. And it was already founded in 1817, and they don't sell titles. But you know, he goes out like this. Then he says, I haven't been to the conferences I claim to be, like MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, had a closed conference, invitation only, about alien abductions. Now, they have 700 page uh, proceedings, and I mentioned what I said there in four pages. So, you know, you can lie as much as you want. And I've just let them do it. I first thought that I'll go to court, but I thought, why should I? I don't go on their level. I know, and those who know me, they know who I am, what titles I have, and, and that's it. But um, they often You don't use... play their game. I don't play their game, no. I don't. They often use people who are, how would I say, who don't have a position. Uh, who don't have a, a high title or, or you know a degree or whatever because they make them feel so important that you have to do this for us and so you're a good guy, you know. I laugh. It's something that's incredible because... This is 2007 they wrote that? Yeah, 18th of July. 
so you know, it's uh, it's unbelievable actually because they've never written a word about UFOs. Do you think uh, they'll do you think they'll use uh, you'd be uh, an important person within the Scandinavian community that if they wanted to they would use yourself as a mechanism of discussion and release? I, I could think so. I could think so, but I don't work with anybody. I'm, you know, but why do I why do I get an invitation to th to this conference, for instance? I was flabbergasted. I, I usually go when I'm invited. Yeah. If it, if the speakers, I know the speakers, you know, if they're good or whatever. It it could very well be. All of a sudden, I come here, and I find a pile of papers that were stolen eight years ago from me. They're back now. Now I need them. You know, oh, this is very kind of them to give you. Isn't it? Time. Isn't it? <laughs> but How they stole that? my eight years, eight years work. Papers all gone. And a journalist, a Norwegian journalist whom I have met now, uh, said that somebody came, him a pile of papers, and said, "You're a journalist. Why don't you make a book?" And he did. But my automatic so writing th said. So those were your. Uh -huh. papers that he then made a book from your work. That's right, partly, 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 but I can't prove anything. And uh, then uh, my automatic writing said, well, you should be only glad that things come out, even if you don't get the credit. Yeah. And I said, okay, but eight years. Yeah. So. I always say you never make money working for the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> you work like but hell. <laughs> You don't get, uh, don't ask for the credit either.